write better copy. Whether it's for your business and you want to just make those landing pages actually convert or it's just you want to make clients more money so you can make more money, we both know that our copywriting has to improve. So I'm going to show you what good copywriters do to actually make good copywriting. All right, and if you enjoy my content, I'd appreciate it if you just gently tap that like button. Let's get started. Good copywriters use stories in their copywriting. Now, why the heck do we use stories? Is because people love stories. Here, let me give you an example. You see movies, you see Harry Potter, you see books, you see stories, and the most popular ones are the stories that grab the reader's attention and makes them envision into their own world. And that's exactly what you want to do for your advertisement. According to this random article I found on Forbes, a good story is going to make the person much more likely to remember by 22 times, okay? And yeah, the source is kind of sketchy, but it's true that a good story is going to make you imprint that in your mind. So how can we use that? What kind of story can we come up with that we can use to sell our products and our service? Well, the best way, and that one they could use for many business models, is just talking to a customer and then asking if something interesting happened when you use the product. Let's say you want to lose weight, okay? You're selling weight supplements, okay? And then you're talking to your customer, you're like, hey, how are you? And then you just go into more depth and then you find out that she didn't believe in your product at first. She tried it, it works, and then she was like, okay, I'm still a little skeptical. Does it just work for me? And then she tried it with her kids. And that's, that's an angle you can use for your copywriting. And you can put the headline such as, you know, customer, 58-year-old woman thought this was a scam until she tried it. See what actually happened. Or something along those lines. What you want to do is you want to create something that grabs their attention, a story, something that would interest the readers at the same time show your product and highlight it at its best level. Tip dos. The second thing you want to do is you want to make your copy easy to skim and easy to read. Let's be real, whenever we see articles, there's like what, 1 billion articles and it's increasing in Google. So what, we, what do we do when we check an article? We skim it first, see if it's easy to read. Because if it's giant blocks of text, well, unless it is such, it is a gold mine, we're probably gonna skip it and go to something that's easier to digest. And that's why there's a lot of blog posts that they put one to three sentences max per paragraph because it's a lot easier to skim, it's a lot easier to digest information, and just by having it cut down to one to three sentences, you have to be much more precise or concise with your copy. The way to make it easy to skim is when you create your sub headlines, when you're creating a Google Doc and you're writing out your landing page, you know there's, there's head two, head three headers? You wanna use those, and the way to use them to convert on your landing page is you want to create your highlight your best or not your best benefit your one of your best benefits over and over because we know that people are going to skim through your landing page so you want to put your best benefits that are very easy to read and when they're skimming through you know they're checking it out if it's actually worth the read they're going to be like oh wow yeah this this health supplement you know it actually burns fat i want to burn my fat let me try it out or let me actually read this article. Let's see, you know, this is something that, that's very personal, something that involves me. And you just want to highlight it. And the same thing with just other, other AdWord platforms, such as Google Ads, you know. You only have one to two sentences that you can just type in that description box. And you have to be very precise. And it has to be very easy to read, very easy to skim, and just get the main points across. And that's what you want to do with every single copywriting project that you're doing. Third tip I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to every single word that you write, okay? Back in the 1900s, back when they had to do newspapers and they had to type it out with the, what was it called, typewriter. Man, I, I, I couldn't even remember what it was called. That, that's how old it is. Anyways, you want to make sure that they had to pay for each and every word because they had to pay for a certain amount of space. And with Google and with these landing pages, we can create it as long as possible. But if it's long and crap, well, it's not gonna convert because it's gonna be boring to the readers. That's why you wanna make sure that you pay every attention to every single word. Make sure each word adds to the selling process. It doesn't make the reader like a little tired, little, oh man, I don't wanna read anymore. 
because the moment you lose the attention of the reader, well, he's not going to read the rest of your article, and if he doesn't read the rest of your article, well, he's going to be much less likely to convert. Tip four, I want you, whenever you create a project, after you're done researching, you know, you're going through that lengthy process of weeks, days, maybe a ton of hours of just researching on your specific niche, on your specific audience, the next thing I want you to do is once you have compiled all that information and you feel like you're ready to write, I want you to write it all in one go. Now that seems like kind of crazy, like what? You want me to write the entire landing page? That's going to take like what, six hours? Trust me, it's a lot better when you just do it all in one go because you, that inspiration striked and you're just, you have to take it, advantage of it at that moment. Because what's going to happen is, let's say you decide to do you know, half today, half tomorrow. Well, the inspiration will strike for the first half. The second half, you're going to cool down. You're not going to have that inspiration. And then it's going to take time to you know, think about all the things that, okay, what was I trying to say again? Uh, okay, and you have to reread it and you have to try to get your thoughts back. And it's just, it won't be as good compared to just writing it all in one go. I know. I know it's a lot of a time investment, so when you do it, make sure one, the inspiration strikes, and two, you have enough time to actually do it all in one go. And when you do that, you're gonna, it's, the words are going to be jumbled up, alright? It's, it's, it's going to be a stream of consciousness across every single line, and it's just going to sound kind of English, kind of not. It's just going to be you ranting maybe a little bit, and that's, that's what the other days are for, you know, editing out, making sure each word adds to your selling power, but for that first go, I want you to do it all at one time. Tip number five, I want you to have a giant big idea for your ad. Every single successful advertisement had one central idea, that one idea that would grab the attentions reader and just make them read on to the next article and next sentence until they bought it. For example, with Ogilvy, you know, what he did for his Rolls Royce ad was, there's a lot of things you can, you know, brand and angle it, you know, it, it's a great car, you know, it, it probably ran well, but the way he angled it was that it was quiet. And so he found out a way to create an angle about how great the car was, how fast it can go, and how quiet it can be. And his whole article elaborated on the point of how quiet and amazing this car was. And this, this drove readers nuts because they wanted a quiet, great car. And so they, you know, they actually bought the car. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to search for that one big idea. Now, you could be off a couple times off, okay? It's, it's normal, you know? You don't know exactly what will strike your target audience mind. But just that one idea, that one idea, if you can get it right, you will grab their attention and you, you actually won't have to do much marketing, much selling because... That idea is so strong that they're going to probably buy or just ready be so persuaded to try out your product. Tip six, I want you to write at the same time every day when you're practicing copywriting or if you're writing copywriting for your business or clients. The reason why I say this is because we are creatures of habit, okay? When we write at the same time, what happens is when we wake up, our brain is geared towards like, okay, this, this is writing time. You know, I don't feel like writing today, but I know this is writing time. And your brain just like automatically adjusts to yourself to prepare itself to create more ideas because when you create writing, you know, at different times of the day, it's great that you're doing work, but at the same time, it won't be as productive as writing at the same time every day just because, you know, your brain has to warm up a little bit if you just do it, you know, one afternoon, then the evening the next day, and then the morning, and you're just, you know, you're confusing your brain out, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you have some sort of time schedule where you do your writing practice and create a habit of that so that when you jump into that writing, your brain is a lot more ready, a lot more fresh to start writing. A lot of great copywriters are great salesmen just for the single aspect that copywriting is all about selling a product, okay? It's all about getting results. It's all about sending people to a lead generate or just to your email list. It's all about knowing your customers. So tip number seven is you wanna write your copy like a super successful salesman. If you tried to sell something randomly to a person, just, just meet up a person, it is very 
hard to convert that person, to sell something, okay? See, successful salesmen are just your everyday, you know, regular guys who, you know, they thought they found something helpful and they're just introducing it to a friend, all right? You want the same point of view, the same perspective when you're trying to sell your copy, okay? When you do that, it makes it a lot easier. It builds a lot more trust and credibility. You're not some sleazy salesman trying to be like slipping a BMW into the pockets and you know, all of a sudden they have to pay and it's just like, what, what, what happened here? No, you wanna just be that regular guy that's like, yeah, I can help you with this specific problem. Here's a product that I tried out. It works great. I want you to try it out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, just send it back to me. No, no, no problem, no. Money back guarantee, just, just trust me, man. And that's the aspect you want to have for your salesman or selling coffee because you want to build trust and credibility. And the best way to do that is just to be yourself and just not be a sleazy salesman. Eight, make your first sentence really good. Like this is the second priority after your headline. You want to make it so good that it grabs their attention. A really good way to do this is to use an if then statement. You know, if you are a business owner trying to make money, then this would probably be a great message to look at a copywriter. You know, something along that lines that grabs your attention's reader, something that shows them what's in it for them because the headline is like, okay, this is the basic idea, you know, it grabbed the attention that you want to lead them. The next thing they're going to read is the first sentence. And when they read that first sentence, what you want to do is you want to just segue into either a story about how a successful salesman or whatever angle that you're trying to do it at and then you just slowly go to the next sentence, read the next sentence. That's the point of the sentence is you want to make them read the next sentence and then the next sentence because when they keep reading it, it's much more likely that they're going to be persuaded and much more likely to buy a product. Tip number nine, I want you to use pictures of your product if you can. See, when they have a picture of the actual product, one, it shows that you're not just gonna, you know, just dip out once they pay you, but two, it shows what they're actually gonna get. Be realistic, you know. It's just, sure, you should hype it up. At the same time, you shouldn't just try to sell something that you don't have. So when you show a product that you have, one, it builds credibility, okay? It shows like, okay, this dude actually has a product he's trying to sell. And the best way to use this picture is just, first, have a picture of the actual product, but a better way is to have it in use you know, just someone actually using the product, see how it can apply to their lives. And a third best way to use a picture is what would happen when, you know, you know those before and after pictures, you know, like before it's just crap and now, you know, after using this vacuum cleaner, it's amazing. You want to have that after, you want to have the before and after picture. Those are really powerful. Or just one of them, you know, just show the results of what your product can do for your customer. Once you can show the value, once you can just, you know, just shove it in value right into their face, you know, then you could be like, okay, yeah, this, this is what it does. And you know, pictures is a lot easier to convey than the giant block of text. Just make sure that when you use your picture, that when you take out that block of text, that it doesn't, you know, hinder your ability to sell, you know, it just enhances it. Okay. Tip 10, use power words. I wrote a blog article and I made a video on this. And the reason why power words are powerful is because it adds images to your customer's head. Now the last step, I was talking about how powerful images are, but imagine how much more powerful when you can make them visualize what you want them to visualize. You see, when we're reading sentences, we're visualizing, you know, how it could play in our heads, you know, how the product looks like, you know, what can it do for us? And that's exactly what power words do. You know, if I use the word walk, well, you're going to have a picture, you know, just like walking, just strolling. But if I use the word sprinting, then you're going to see them just sprinting. And if you see them crawling, you know, you're probably going to imagine someone on the ground, you know, going away from something. And it's just the way you use your words that affects the pictures in the customer's mind. Tip 11, I want you to use testimonials. We all know that testimonials are great, but a lot of people don't know how to use them properly. See, the best testimonials is usually one with video where it shows a person before, during, and after using their product. You know, before, before I didn't have their vacuum cleaner, my, my house just didn't suck up all the dirt. Now that I'm using it, you know, my house is a lot cleaner. And when you're getting feedback from someone else, it just adds social proof. 
Or another great way to make your testimonial just so much better, just to put your leg up for your competition, is to have that video and then that one sentence quote underneath it to show readers the exact benefit. And when you do that, when they're skimming through that testimonial, like, wow, okay, this is social proof. And you know, they don't have to waste two minutes watching the testimonial, they can just read the snippet. And that's how you use testimonials to enhance your business, all right? Use it right now. If you have testimonials, use them. If you don't, get them. If you enjoyed my content, you know, just tap that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And that's it for today, you know. Peace out.